So this house is fed by a natural spring. Comes out a hundred-ish yards that way. Comes into the house. This here feeds into this cistern. Now the reason we needed a cistern is because the spring does not have enough flow to reliably feed the jet pump. This jet pump here is extremely old and apparently the pressure switch has gone bad on it and somebody bypassed it. And there's no pressure tank either. Overall, just a non-optimal situation. It goes straight into the house plumbing. So I'm gonna work on fixing this. The cistern, it's doing fine. We set that up a while ago. It's got a float valve to turn on and off the water flow coming from the spring, which I'll also wanna adjust that because this tank's only about two thirds of the way full with where it is right now. I'm gonna replumb this line, replace that jet pump, and then also set up a little pressure tank to act as a reservoir so we don't have to have the pump constantly running. So yeah, let's get on that. Now this thing, this is an abomination made out of multiple different adapters. This is how I'll have to get from the bulkhead of the cistern over to the pump. Now with any PVC, you're gonna wanna prime it first. That's what this purple stuff is. It just is like an acetone based cleaner. It just makes the PVC slightly tacky I then put the glue on it, put it on both sides, smoosh it down. One of the things that you do want to be careful about is that the pipes are kind of like press fit. And if you see here, whoop, like that. So with something like this, you want to make sure that when you press it down, you hold it for 20 or 30 seconds. That'll help kind of let it solidify and bond really well. Now this cement is bonding kind of at a chemical level. So it actually like reconnects polymers and such in the PVC with each other. Now in order for this to work the way that I want it to, I want to have a valve so that if I do need to do any kind of maintenance on the system, I can turn it off and disconnect it from the cistern. So that's what you see here with the blue handle. I also have a union, that little like quick junction looking thing just to the left of the valve. That will allow me to disconnect the pump from the cistern without having to like unscrew anything or mess with anything like that. All right, doing more priming, lots more priming and gluing just to get this all put together. I always do my best to try to wipe things up as I go so that I don't end up with too much cement just kind of oozing out and sticking everywhere. There's the union. And finally an elbow to get it to transition from the cistern over to the pump. This here is a tank tee. This end will go to our pressure tank. This end is coming from our pump. This end goes to the house, and then all these thingamabobs are useful for different reasons. We've got a check valve here so we don't have water going back towards our pump. Make sure our arrow is facing the right direction. Got a pressure gauge just for checking that, yep, it is the right pressure. We have a safety release valve. This is rated for 75 PSI just in case it gets too high. Our tank is 100 PSI, so this is plenty safe. This is a drain, so that if we didn't need to drain the system, we can turn this spigot and drain it. This is just a little plug. Normally you'd be able to put in a pressure switch here, but since my jet pump already has a pressure switch, I don't need one. I'm reducing this down from the one inch to three quarter inch. 
and then have this male three quarter inch to shark bite for the pex that goes into the house. And now I'm gonna go ahead and dope this all up, get it screwed in together. I'm gonna be using a pretty standard pipe dope. Some people call it thread sealant. I've just always called it pipe dope. And I'm gonna slather it on all these different threaded joints, screw them in nice and tight. This is self-healing versus something like PTFE tape, which if you were to back it out like at all, it will leak because you'll probably lose, lose the seal. This is more of like a non-hardening paste that will seal in between all the threads and the peaks and valleys that come in them. Got a handy little brush. There we go. That should do. And this gets threaded on here. It does have PTFE in it still, so it does help kind of lubricate the threads. Get them nice and tight on there. Right. Got them about as tight as I can, hand tight. Just give this like maybe a quarter turn more. Maybe a little more. There we go. That's about a half, half turn more. Good and snug, just to keep things a little cleaner than default. I'll go ahead and clean up what I can here. So I don't have a ton extra just sitting there. And we keep doing that. Get this in there good and tight. So I don't have to worry about it leaking at all. That's good enough. All right, this little plug would normally, I would normally put a pressure switch here, but since it's built in, we don't need one. We're still gonna pipe dope it though. Itty bitty plug. This brush is a little bit big for this plug, but we'll make it work. Again, tiny threads. Go. These half inch threads are a little easier. Must be easier with my dominant hand. There we go. Last but certainly not least, a check valve. This side going into the T here. Yep, yeah, I'm making a mess. There we go. Completed pipe tea. Only a little bit messy. All right, gotta dope this up just like everything else on the pipe tea and screw it in. Now, there's not a whole lot of like great space in this basement area. So instead of trying to you know, set it on the ground, I've got some cinder blocks. Here's me uh, checking the overall length of things here. Now I've got to remove this old one. If you'll notice the bend in the pipe, I believe it is actually because the previous jet pump would like never shut off unless I flipped a switch. And it actually heated up the water enough to actually bend the pipe. And yeah, hurts to hit your knuckles on this uh, on this hard ground. Gotta make sure and clean out the little bulkhead opening there. Now, pipe dope and screw this first part of the adapter in. Using a PVC wrench to make sure it's all good and tight. Connect the next part with the valve. All right, time to get this out of here. And bring in the new one. More pipe dope, more tightening things into this pump here. And then this is why I had that union on there so that I could easily adjust those as needed. Now at the top of the pump, that's the outlet that goes off to the pressure tank. I've got another union here just in case I need to replace that pump. More adapters. All right, now this you can actually see uh, kind of a funny valve at the top there. Um, I'm gonna explain a little bit about that while I fit the other things in here. 
So because the level of my cistern is like higher than the actual pump itself, I can use the pressure from the cistern to prime the pump. I don't have to do it like manually. So that little valve there will allow me to open it and let the air out so that I can prime the pump automatically from the cistern. I thought it was a pretty neat idea. You know, it's kind of awkward trying to prime and glue these pieces together and then press them into place without like getting out of line or, you know, putting too much pressure on the, on the joints. But with a little bit of work and uh, a lot of patience, I got it all nice and glued together. I did mention that I'm going to be using PEX to go into the house. So that's what this is. I kind of have to double back on myself because the inlet to the house is on the other side of the pump. So I'll go up and over to where that pipe coming in from the right hand side of the screen is. Got to cut into burr it a little bit, get a nice clean end on it. And yeah, this is, this is a bit janky, but it's what I have to work with. Now, I thought about replacing this PEX, but it is thoroughly stuck into that fitting that goes into the house, so it stays. Now, I shortened the pipe that comes into this float valve, so now the cistern will fill up a lot more. I think I got about 170 to 200 gallons. Just checking that that works. And similarly here, we'll turn on the flow. That'll let it come into the cistern and start filling it back up. All right, now that I've got it all plumbed into place, the final major step is getting it wired in. Now the old system, it had it wired into like another room and it came into a box with a switch. I don't like that. So I decided that I'm going to wire it in directly. I'll still have it on a plug so that I can plug it into existing outlets that are downstairs. So basically I'm making my own extension cord. I got one of these, like, build your own plugs. And there we go. Got it nice and tight, got the cable relief squeezing on that cable jacket nice and tight. And here I'm going to go ahead and fish this cable all the way around to where the pump is, just using some of the existing pipes as kind of places to rest it on, just to keep it up out of the way. Here's the pressure switch cover. Now, this also holds the wires that we run power to for the pump. I just do a simple job of stripping them and screwing them into place. Now that I've got everything plumbed and wired in, we're going to go ahead and test this for the first time. Open the valve over from the cistern and then turn this little valve. If you remember I mentioned how I made this here so that it would have some way to release the air and self prime the pump and it worked quite well. All right. If you heard that, you noticed that that's not great. So what I just realized, I never adjusted the, the, uh, the tank pressure. So this is, I think, set to 38 by default. So I need to change that. All right, so I used just a simple gauge to check and then release some of the pressure. The pressure was indeed incorrect. Uh, my pump likes to work between 30 and 50, and so it was set at 38, so a little too high for it.
while it was something that I needed to adjust, this actually did not resolve my issue. Even when I would turn it back on, it would sit there and cycle on and off repeatedly over and over again, and that is very bad for a pump. Pumps are meant to run about one minute on and then one minute off. All right, so I didn't get to finish recording like the final bits of the whole water pump installation. And the reason for that was I had to leave and I needed to get it done quickly. So I'm going to take a moment and recap what I ended up having to do. So first up here, this was the problem. Uh, yet another jet pump with a broken like pressure switch. So I removed it, just wired it directly through, and then replaced it with your standard like square D pump troll. So that was the final bit that I had to install and figure out. The main issue being that, yes, yet another jet pump with a pressure switch failed. I think going forward, I'm just going to even see if I can just find pumps without any kind of pressure switch. Because why? I just need to replace them anyways. All right. And with that, we are ready to wrap this project up. Hope it was at least entertaining and maybe you learned a little bit. If you'd like to support the channel, you know what to do. Like and subscribe. And if you'd like to support directly, we have a Patreon down in the description below as well. All right. Until next time, be well.